any uh, learning to rank or machine learning ranking uh, papers. So the navigation uh, query means a query has and only has one uh, navigational result. For example, if people search Yahoo, suppose they are on uh, U U US users, so we, uh, we choose Yahoo US as a navigational result. And if a user in India choose uh, uh, input Yahoo, the Yahoo India is the navigational result. Uh, query document uh, pair of features, uh, for example, across uh, the document given a query, so what is the number of uh, word occur uh, occurrence for each word? And what is the proximity score given a query and uh, the document? And uh, the, what is the word score? Uh, and uh, in, in the, uh, another thing also uh, need to be mentioned, because as we know, that document have many different sections, uh, title, body, anch anchor text, abstract, etc. So as we can imagine, title is very important. So we need to uh, compute uh, the query and the document proximity across different uh, sections. Because very likely the, uh, doc the proximity between a query and the title is the most important. So we, gener we break down e uh, into different sections and compute the query and uh, section proximity or uh, or, or occurrence on each section and provides different type of signals. And also for each uh, section, so we also compute the number of the missing word in this section and the matching word, non-matching word, etc. So generally speaking, this is all about different kind of proximity. Given a query, we want uh, uh, on the page the, similar the similarity or proximity between the query and the text is the closer, the, uh, the better. And uh, there are some other uh, paired f features. For, uh, for example, oh, there are another one, something like related to URL matching, given a query, and sometimes there is some matching between the query and the URL. This type of information also provides extra signals. Okay, so how are the features are used by uh, machine learning ranking? So. Uh, uh, because the features, they are correlated with, uh, uh, in terms of learning target and pro, uh, pro provide the pre uh, presence of the relevance anchor score, anchor score and present the percentage of a click. And it is also interact with some other features, for example, the number of query turns, turn, uh, turn frequencies, etc. And they can be used as a weak a reinforce for the relevance of a page, uh, sounds like a span, sounds like a word matching in body and a document. Okay, so by the way, so in the previous uh, subsection, I just uh, introduced some of their uh, representative ranking features for web search. And the later of these uh, slides, I, will, I would uh, introduce, I, I, I would draw some conclusion, which means ranking features sometimes is more important than ranking algorithms. Ranking, fe ranking features sometimes just something like uh, feature engineering, but later we figure out, you know, this kind of feature engineering can truly improve the, uh, the quality, the relevance of a search engine, or sometimes for, for any other uh, related uh, machine learning tasks. Uh, next, I will introduce about the ranking algorithms. So nowadays, not only for Yahoo, but I mean for the whole uh, community, the most popular, the most, uh, you, the most uh, uh, state of the art of learning to rank algorithm is decision tree, decision tree based uh, for regression. For example, if F is a feature and uh, V is some value, and uh, R is some uh, responsive uh, response value on each node. So the decision tree, for example, we first make the decision whether the F is small or larger than value one. And if yes, go to this one. If no, go to this one. Then the question is, why use decision tree? 
So, for example, for like Yahoo, I think uh, some of the uh, scientists, they make the decision to use decision tree based on ranking algorithm more than approximately maybe more than 10 years ago. As you can imagine, 10 years ago, when people think about uh, machine learning algorithms, you would easily think about something like using like uh, uh, SVM or other you know, more popular algorithms. But why uh, finally different uh, learning to rank algorithms are finally converge to decision, decision tree based method? I think one of the very important reasons is uh, uh, the nonlinear model. So SVM, sometimes most of the SVM is still linear model. And also there are some different kernel methods, but still have you know, very strong assumption on it. For many, uh, in, in many real machine learning tasks, different features have a totally different uh, uh, distribution. So nonlinear non non uh, machine learning models is much more uh, effective, much more uh, useful than linear models. So it is a decision tree based method. And it is not a simple, uh, simple decision tree, it's a gradient boosting tree. So which means uh, final model is a series of uh, decision trees, it is addictive models. And given one feature vectors, uh, we first learn one decision tree. And uh, based on the prediction of the uh, decision tree one, uh, and based on the same feature set, we then uh, learn the second uh, uh, tree. And finally, the final model is, uh, uh, is uh, a sum of the prediction of all the uh, all, all trees and generate one score, we call the final relevant score, and then sorted by the uh, relevant score, then we can have the final ranking result. So here is some of their formulas, and in this presentation, I try to avoid any you know, complex uh, uh, formulas, but you know, I think this is so one of them. So uh, this algorithm uh, we call the GBDT, that is a stochastic gradient boosting tree. And this algorithm actually is invented by a professor in Stanford in 1999. It's an old uh, algorithm, but still very effective nowadays. So uh, it is called point-wise uh, algorithm. So what called point-wise, which means for different uh, training data, we consider each data point, each query and URL pair as one uh, learning uh, point. And uh, only consider, the, consider each query URL pair independently. And later, there are some other algorithms called uh, pairwise or listwise I will introduce later. And uh, it is a uh, general function estimation and risk mini 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 minimization problem. And the input is a uh, uh, big matrix, so x. So uh, each xi uh, is, a, is a vector uh, which is represent a query URL pair. And the output uh, is y. Uh, actually, y is the uh, learning, learning target that is PEC5 uh, five grade. As, as we know that uh, Originally, we asked the editor to, for each query and URL pair, give five grade la labels, and we can map them into five grades, something like uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, something like this. And here is the uh, training data, and uh, yi, xi become a huge uh, uh, matrix. And the goal is to estimate the mapping function y equal to fx, and as a op Optimal f, uh, f is trying to find the minimum, uh, the best uh, f function, which can minimize the loss between y and f x. And uh, in this case, we just use uh, square loss, which means uh, to compare the y minus f x square. So that is just uh, the basic idea of uh, GBT, and uh, it is uh, stochastic, which means for uh, different round, we, we, ha we have some uh, sub, uh, sub sampling and use uh, gradient boosting to find the uh, optimal F and finally become a, a model called, uh, called uh, stochastic gradient boosting tree. And there is another uh, big family of algorithm uh, called pairwise. So what is pairwise? So as we can imagine, we already ask editors to train a lot of uh, labeled data. 
and each query and URL become a vector and we have a one label. It is good, so we, we call it point-wise. However, point-wise cannot, le cannot leverage the click information because we, we have you know, billions of uh, click information every day. And how to effectively leverage this kind of click information? Because uh, we cannot have an absolute uh, value in term, uh, derived from click. However, we can uh, get some relative signals. For example, given our one query, so the idea of list-wise is how to find the best uh, list ordering of the, uh, of the result which can optimize uh, some of their uh, evaluation metrics, something like DCG. But uh, th there are many, many papers related to list-wise, list but in re reality, we find uh, list-wise uh, algorithms, they are, they are not uh, stable enough, they are not e effective enough. So also there are many papers in the past, but uh, list-wise uh, ranking algorithms are not widely used nowadays. Okay, uh, the next part is about uh, evaluation metrics. So uh, for evaluation, so in, for uh, like a commercial search engine, we sometimes we call it per item test, which means we random sample to, for example, several hundred or thousand queries. Uh, based, uh, and this kind of sample, uh, query sampling is based on the query distribution. And for each query, we collect the top five result and scored by uh, an ask editors to label the based on the uh, pack fab or result, and then use uh, DCG uh, or other metrics to compute the result. And also we use some other statistics, for example, uh, how many, what is the percentage uh, in top position, what is the percentage uh, uh, for, for bad, which is labeled as bad, and the measure of some of their uh, actual result, which means all, some, uh, sometimes the result is labeled by editor, which is good, but the, the summary on the search engine result is, is different. So that is what we call the uh, actual relevance. And we also uh, ask, sometimes we also ask uh, editor to provide some side-by-side -side, uh, uh, test. For example, uh, given some, okay, uh, given some query, not consider, uh, only consider the top five result and compare for example, Yahoo with uh, Google, compare Yahoo with Yandex, and just uh, ask the editor to, to judge which one is better. Do you like Google better? Do you like Yandex better? Or do you like Yahoo better? So this kind of uh, uh, judgment, I mean, is very important because it will help, uh, help us to understand whether user really like uh, search engine A instead of search engine B. But uh, this type of judgment cannot be reused for machine learning task because it is a, a, a holistic uh, judgment. However, per item, that is, a based, that is a judgment based on each uh, query and document pair. So per item judgment can be reused for, machine, uh, for learning to rank task, but the side-by-side -side, uh, result cannot be re reused for learning to rank task. And there are some other uh, metrics which is also very important. One is called a bucket test. Uh, some of you, if you are in industry, I think you may be uh, familiar with bucket test uh, very well, but some of you, if you are students, uh, I will introduce what is bucket test. So bucket test is, uh, think about uh, Yahoo search engine, and there are uh, hundreds of millions of users, and we can do some uh, instrument, instrumentation. For example, trying to ran randomly pick 1% of the query, well, sorry, 1% of the users and show different result, and 1% of the user show current result. For example, the 1% of the user, they show the new ranking function, and 1% of the user show current ranking function. Then we have a lot of uh, statistics about uh, what the user behave on different ranking algorithms. So it, it is much more uh, safe, and it is much more conservative just to switch a new algorithm to all the users. Because based on the bucket test, we have a very uh, deep understanding what the user really like or really dislike about some of the uh, new features of the new, uh, new, new uh, algorithm result. And there are also uh, some metrics which is related to time. So as I 
just uh, mentioned. For example, we can measure how long users spend on the page when they when they click. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the longer time, uh, uh, the better. Okay. So here is uh, in the previous slides I introduced more about uh, the algorithm, about the feature and the data. So here is uh, uh, how we can improve the MRR uh, uh, based on different approach. For example, uh, from the algorithm side, we call the learning to rank algorithm. We have a point-wise algorithm, we have pair-wise algorithm, we have list-wise algorithm, although the list-wise uh, list algorithm nowadays uh, we find it is not uh, very stable. And we also have some click models for ranking. As we can imagine, there are some of their problems. Uh, for example, we want to provide a ranking result for, for a country in, in Vietnam, and, uh, or probably in a country in Arabic. So, for example, if uh, Yahoo or Google or, or Microsoft, right, we don't have delicate editors in Arabic countries, so maybe we cannot uh, do a machine learning task based on editorial labeled data. However, we still can uh, derive those kind of click preference based on click information and to learn some model based on pile-wise the, uh, the learning method. Uh, and there are also there are other, some, uh, other ranking algorithms, but generally speaking, the most popular one can be categorized into point-wise, pair-wise, and list-wise. And in terms of feature, and, uh, feature research, so we have query-dependent feature, we have document-dependent feature. Uh, PageRank is one of the very important document-dependent feature. There are other uh, query document-dependent feature. There are many features derived with click information. There are many features derived from external reference, something like uh, Twitter, Delicious, Facebook, etc. And there are some uh, data research. Uh, including like uh, data uh, active learning, data aggregation, etc. So generally, this graph show MR is a combination of uh, MR develop uh, development is a combination of uh, algorithm development, data development, feature development. So this graph I will uh, show it later uh, quite often to show. For example, we have some detailed research. Uh, some of them is only related to algorithm, some of them on, only re relate to features. Okay, uh, machine learning ranking. So what is the uh, future direction for machine learning ranking? Uh, for this task, I prefer to uh, talk about it uh, later because I, in the next one, I would like to introduce this part first, Yahoo Learning to Rank Challenge Overview. Uh, because it it uh, give us some of their broad idea what is the state of the art of the learning to rank algorithms. So uh, maybe I will talk a little bit more than one hour, then have a break. So okay. So this one is uh, in a separate slides because it is originally generated in PDF file. Okay, uh, Yahoo Learning to Rank Challenge. So Yahoo in 2010, we launched a Yahoo Learning to Rank Challenge, uh, which is very uh, important in the year of 2010, because at that time, uh, the competition in search engine still very, very heavy, and uh, this competition gives the whole community, research community and industry community, about the state of the art of the learning to rank algorithms. And uh, this is handled by one colleague, uh, Oliver Chapper, uh, in Yahoo Labs at that time. Now he's not in Yahoo Labs anymore. And uh, he and I uh, organized this challenge. And uh, this challenge is uh, the basic ideas. Before that, I mean, learning to rank, I believe the first learning to rank paper is published around the year of 2004, 2005. And around in the year of 2006, 2007, 2008, it's very, very popular on conference like CGR or WW. There's a separate uh, track just about the different learning to rank algorithms. So a lot of papers at that time. But one of the big challenge is different, there, there, there lack of uh, 
uh, cross uh, the open uh, open uh, open space the uh, data set for for example there are some data set which is some of the tour data set based on some of the track data which means there are some data set for learning to rank task but they are not originally for learning to rank so the data set is not cannot truly reflect the true distribution of their learning to rank challenge. So in the year of 2010, Yahoo decided to launch a learning to rank challenge. We decided to launch some of their Yahoo's, uh, a, a proportion of Yahoo's real data to the whole community, to the whole uh, research and, uh, and industry community to test what is the state of the art of the ranking algorithm. Before that, for example, as I mentioned, the most popular uh, data set called the Letter, which is uh, proposed uh, by Microsoft Research. As we can see, the query number is small, and the document number is very small, and the feature set is very small. And uh, basically, that is based on track data set. It is not a ranking problem at all. And 2009, Yandex also published a data set, and the size is reasonable. But the feature set is still uh, very small, so which cannot uh, uh, reflect the real challenge of the uh, learning to rank task. And Yahoo published the data. We have you know big amount of queries and uh, huge amount of uh, labeled data. Relevance is five. Feature set is seven hundred. I would say it's just a subset of our uh, real data set. But it's already very very difficult. Because uh, we, internally we have some calculation. Yahoo's data set is, uh, you know, cost uh, multi-million US dollars. We ask editors to label it for a long, long time and have this kind of data set. And uh, it has two uh, different track uh, using two different data set. So track one is uh, uh, just uh, based on the data from the US, uh, from the US search engine. So it is a standard uh, learning to rank task. And the track two, uh, we provide two data sets. So one is a data set uh, for, for US market, and one is for Japan market. And we published da uh, data set two, is trying to test the transfer learning, learning to rank algorithm of the whole community. And uh, as we can see here, that the, in training data one, the data set is much larger than training data two. So that is, uh, for transfer learning, I will sp spend some time talk about it later. But the basic idea is, think about uh, for a company like Yahoo, uh, put a lot of investment on US market and provide a good search engine result, uh, ranking result on US market. But now in a different market, something like Japan or something like Vietnam. So we have some editors to provide some amount of data but much, much smaller than this one. The question is, but, but we know that these two data, these two tasks has a lot of synergy, have a lot of similarity. So can we leverage, transfer some of their knowledge from task one and apply it on task two? So in uh, machine learning community, it, this is so-called transfer learning task. So in this problem, we call the transfer learning to rank task. And uh, the, for data set, uh, so we random uh, split uh, between the training set and the validation set and the testing data. So we have internal, we have a big data set and we you know, split it into training, validation and the testing. And uh, first we provide the training data to the whole community. And then we give a buffer, something like, uh, I remember that's around 90 days or 100 days. And people can, you know, try, train their model and provide their result to our website. There is a validation. So they can just submit uh, their result to, to the validation, but they cannot really take the uh, validation as for, for their training. And uh, they can just adjust their algorithm or parameter based on the validation. And finally, at the last day, uh, each team or each person can submit one result, uh, one training uh, result for the testing. And the final uh, competition or challenge is based on the result, on the, on the testing result. So which means we give some feedback uh, 
uh, based on the validation to, to the user. However, users should be, uh, the competitors should be very cautious uh, because overfitting sometimes is possible, right? And the validation set is uh, much small, uh, is smaller than test data set just uh, to try to uh, avoid the user to, uh, to use the, uh, uh, to, to, to avoid user overfitting. And compare task one and task two. Uh, altogether, there, there are 700 features in task one, and there are 700 features in task two. But in between, only 400 features they are common. There are other features which is not common. So why? For example, as we can imagine, for US market, we have some click information. But this kind of click information is e irrelevant to click information in Japan. For example, uh, I, I give another example. For example, uh, uh, people search a query in US, and uh, because U US have a big population, so the click on the top one position is much higher. But for example, if people in, in a different country, the population is smaller, those kind of uh, signal, those kind of user behavior will, will be totally different. So as a result, this kind of click, click related features is not, uh, cannot be uh, re reused across different markets. But there are some, some features, something like proximity between a query and a title section. It is something common. So finally, we have some features in common, uh, which increase the difficulty for transfer link task. And the query are random sampled from the query log. And finally, the feature are normalized between zero and one. And uh, because originally, the feature distribution is uh, totally screwed, but we're trying to normalize between zero and one, which means uh, if the feature are all well normalized, something like uh, SVM, or this kind of linear uh, ranking algorithm can be applied to this task. And uh, because, as I, as I mentioned, uh, the data set for Yahoo is uh, very, very uh, valuable. And it's a multi-million or maybe tens of million uh, value data set. So as a result, so all query URL and feature, uh, their semantic are not uh, reviewed. So for user, for competitors, they just consider as a typical machine learning problems. They have query one, query two, query three, uh, feature one, feature two, feature three, but people don't have any idea about what is a query, what is the URL, and what is the meaning of different features. And uh, here is the distribution of the data set. Uh, as we see here, the judgment is five grade. And uh, as we see here, that the percentage of perfect is very, very small, because perfect means uh, navigational query. And uh, most of their result, uh, uh, most of their result are uh, fair or bad which means uh, on this uh, learning task, uh, the distribution is not, uh, uh, is not uh, balanced, which also increases the challenge of the uh, machine learning task. Okay, and here is some of their uh, other uh, characteristics. For example, on average, uh, about uh, 25 documents are, are labeled by editors. And, uh, uh, there are different uh, type of uh, features, something like a binary features, yes or no. Uh, there are some count features, uh, for example, how many, uh, what is the frequency of a query, something like this. But all, all these features are normalized later. And there are some categor uh, cate cate uh, categorical features, and there are some continuous features. Categor uh, categorical features, uh, for example, there are some features like uh, what is the language of this query, right? We have different language. But uh, different language, just in different category, we cannot say, you know, Japanese language is better than English, or English is better than Vietnamese, we can say that. And there are some other features, continuous features. So, uh, so yeah, this is uh, the, log, uh, the, frequency of, uh, the log and the frequency of the feature distribution. Okay, and uh, this data set is still very popular nowadays because uh, uh, for any new learning to rank uh, papers, uh, they more or less would uh, consider verify their new algorithms based on this data set. So this data set is still available, but in case this website, if you, some of you uh, have interest in learning to rank task, if you cannot find uh, this data set, I'm not 100% sure 
whether this uh, website is still accessible or not. If not, please send me an email and I can send you the uh, right link uh, uh, to about the data set. And this data set is not uh, restricted to academia researchers, which means uh, other industries, uh, industry research can also download or reuse this data set. And we are, uh, yeah, warmly welcome any uh, potential researchers if you're interested on the learning to rank uh, task can try this data set. Okay, and uh, in, term, oh, in terms of challenge, so we provide three months to uh, let the competitors to, to tune their parameters uh, based on the validation data set. And uh, each day, so to, to avoid this, to gaming our data set, each day, each team can most submit three uh, results. And we provide uh, immediate feedback on the validation set, but uh, we never uh, leak any 